post it if there's nothing useful. There we go. Right, can you see my screen all right? I can. I think part of my problem is I've been a OOO for a, yeah. a couple of weeks, so I've been completely out of this That's fine. loop. We've had some fairly lengthy discussions about this as well, so it's quite possible <laughs> that something has changed since um, we last discussed it. So in terms of your last comment, um, front end is going to have to call an endpoint, but not multiple ones. So this one that I propose here <coughs> will return a, an array, which this example probably doesn't make very clear because only one thing in it, an array of external approvals. Um, yeah. So you'll see multiples of these. So if a project has 10 um, external approval rules, regardless of their status, this will always return 10 items in this array, but approved will be true or false. Yes. Um, so the front end will have to poll this. Yeah. Uh, and then display that status, which will be the approved or not approved. Right. So I get that's where I'm getting confused is okay. what's the interim state? Because uh, when someone first creates an MR, um, and we start this external approval rule, we kick off this approval rule process, this external approval rule process. It's not going to be finished when that MR gets loaded up first time. I mean, we, we could yeah. hope that it gets done in a second and returns, but it's not likely. It, it, it's Chances highly are. likely it won't be. So my, concern, my question is, how do if we've only got approved and true false, it means that initially we're going to say everything has failed which doesn't make sense from a UI point of view, and which is where I'm getting confused. Yeah, so in this initial iteration, we're not uh, not approved as equivalent to pending. So the only two options that a rule can be is either not approved, i.e. it hasn't been approved yet, rather than specifically disapproved, or it has been approved. So the only two states that we're implementing at this point are essentially pending and approved. Okay, just because there's designs which show green tick yeah. and red cross, you know. Yeah, um, so that's confusing. So that's there was a conversation uh, on the designs yesterday with Austin. These are always really hard to surface. I always it's hard to it's easy to miss these conversations. Um, yes. I don't know if you'd seen this yet. So Austin was basically asking the same question: Are we looking for approved or approved false? Um, or shall I clarify, for the first iteration, we're assuming that all the responses are approving. So any response, any post back, we assume is an approval. Um, yeah, and we're which not makes sense. It. So this design is slightly misleading in the sense that the only states that we'll be implementing are this one and this one, or pending or no response, I guess, in this sense are essentially the same thing. Um, well, pending means we haven't had anything back. No response means that. Well, that makes no sense because no response. If we're relying, so we say to we ping these external approvals and say start your process. And they need to respond to our external approve endpoint to mm -hmm. say we have approved this. Correct. We don't sit there and wait for their API to get back to our initial request for them to start doing stuff. So the no response makes no sense. No, um, we that, could that's, sorry, do some kind of background worker process, which goes: Have we heard anything back from this request from us in X amount of time? But that seems like a, a yeah. I mean, that, that's kind of a not very useful. A, yeah, it's more of an implementation detail at this point. So, I mean, from a front end point of view, in my head, you'd need to poll this API as often as you want. Um, and then if any go from false to true, then you can add them to the list of successful checks. Um, and any that haven't been approved yet belong in pending. In future iterations, we will add the ability to A, undo an approval, so unapproved, and then potentially add in a failure status, so specifically disapproving. Um, but this 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 was slightly contentious in the idea that um, the source code team, I think, have had this discussion repeatedly in the past about whether or not um, merge request approvals can be 
negative as well as positive. So at the moment, merge request approvals, you can approve a merge request. You can't, un you can't disapprove a merge request. And we'd yeah, be introducing but, that concept. Yes, but status checks on an approval, they yeah. are a validation. Just like security checks will say you failed a, a security vulnerability. We're not saying that you can't merge it, but mm -hmm. it hasn't passed a test that we that's been implemented, which is a, and the same with other well, any other kind of tests. Specifically, it has. It's not that it hasn't passed; it's specifically failed it. Um, that's the difference. Um, but yes, you are right because we're now no longer implementing this as part of the approvals widget in the merge request page. It's a separate block. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we should target implementing uh, failure, but as part of this first iteration, don't think we're going to do that. So my then my now question is, uh, how from an implementation point of view, how does this process work? So an MR gets created, do we kick off a back end ground worker which sends the ping to all of these endpoints and says start your process? Correct. Yeah. So as soon as as soon as either a merge request is created, so um, on any anything that would trigger a merge request webhook currently, so that's creating, deleting, updating, or pushing yeah. to the head of the source uh, branch, that will fire off <clears throat> a webhook payload to the the specified API endpoint. And these are stored against the SHA. Yes. So. Uh, yes, they are. Um, so the webhook payload includes the SHA of head. Um, yeah. So then to send the approval back, you must include the SHA that you're approving. And if you send a, an old SHA, it will respond with a 409 to say this is not, you know, that you're approving something that's old. Uh, that's yeah. how merge requests approvals work now. So we're yeah. just, we're following that. That makes sense. So internally, we are um, storing that response against <clears throat> the, sh the latest SHA of that MR. Correct. And then surfacing that in the API. So I guess my next question is, and that's where approved disapproves come from, because we've got a Boolean somewhere in the database which says against this SHA, it's either not, we haven't heard anything back, or it's we've heard something back against this endpoint, so it becomes true. Whatever that I mean, response was, we don't uh, care. In, in reality, at this moment in time, that doesn't work, but yes, that's the intention. <laughs> right, fair that enough. Is what I'm, that so, is what I'm working on at the moment. So my next question is, why couldn't we have a true pending and success, so either null or true, and not make users false at all? If we intend of having false as an as a future state, could we not just have null for we've kicked off this process, but we've never we haven't had and that we they haven't hit our external approve endpoint, and true they've hit that endpoint. Um, there's no reason we can't do that other than uh, we decided on a scope for this issue, and that's what we were going to target for a first iteration. Uh, technically, no, speaking, I didn't, I there's did, no problem with that. I didn't mean changing the scope i just meant rather than saying approved equals false we just say approved equals null because that's technically true it's not that it's oh, yeah, not approved true. which is what false would do if anyone comes down like a month down the line and looks at the table and it says approved false to a, you would anyone else that's not involved in this would go right so they failed that approved they explicitly failed where null means we haven't had a response true um so which not, then leaves not, false open for future when we do actually start looking at. So this approved true and approved false isn't. We're not actually exposing the database schema here. Um, it the approval is a separate table in itself called external approvals, which oh, okay. which is a, a join table between merge request and um, external approval rule. Uh, so we will calculate whether or not it's approved or not if a external approval exists between both that merge request and the approval. Oh, so okay. its existence is what in, implies whether or not it's been, it's been approved or not. Um, so the next step will be ah, to- that makes sense. Yeah, the next step will be to um, 
change the schema of the external approval table to uh, to allow for a, a specific disallowing. Status. Yeah, at the moment, just the the pure existence of that row in that table will imply that it's been approved. Okay, all right, then I uh, scrap that. That makes a lot more sense to me. Then, I guess my net my final point is whether we if we do we want approved to be true what would eventually most likely be true false none or would we rather have a column that is status with enums denoting yeah i mean that, that, that would probably make know. more sense yeah i mean to avoid um <laughs> potential breaking changes uh that's how we do merge request status at the moment isn't it we use an enum to define what type what state the yeah. merge request is in yeah, that's a fair point. Um, yeah, that, that you, sounds. We're making a distinction already between unapproved and disapproved. Yeah, so that seems like a clear. Approved too. We could have status. Um, and then at the moment it would be approved or pending. Yeah, uh, and then we could add more statuses to that in the future without causing breaking changes to the API. All right, that seems quite sensible. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> okay, this makes a lot more sense to me now. It, Good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was starting to get very confused. <laughs> yeah, we're, um, I'm, I'm slightly blocked on just general implementation at the moment. So just to give you a bit more um, context. So I'm working on the ability to approve via the API, so a post endpoint to external yeah. approve. Um, and I'm currently working on how we off how the third party system authenticates with GitLab to say, you know, hey, I approve. Um, and we don't want to use, I don't think we want to use personal access tokens to do that. Um, but I'm also not super keen on introducing a new type of authentication method, a new token type. Um, should so, it not just be the standard access tokens we use for all the other APIs? Yes and no, but uh, those are usually coupled to users, and then you end up losing the separation of concerns because a an owner, for example, or a, a maintainer or a developer potentially could approve, could send an API call to a list to say, hey, I approve it, when actually it's not been approved by the third party system. So that in theory, needs to be a secret between GitLab and the external system, um, rather than yeah. being coupled to an individual user. Uh, I mean, the alternative is to have a user role or user permission that we say this user, because I mean, most, uh, uh, at least for me, when working with APIs in the past, you've had two approaches. One is, as you say, it's a secret that you hand out, you know, um, <clears throat> that they that you they can use to ping our api or you create a bot user or an mm -hmm. api user and you give that api <coughs> specific permissions to do x y and z yeah. um so the thing that would, I've the thing i've suggested yeah. here is that we as part of that payload that we send when the merge requests are updated we send a secret key essentially to that service and say if you want to approve you need to send this back to us um which is a legit form of authentication, but I can't find any other examples of that in GitLab. So it would be treading potentially new ground. Anyway, uh, realistically, to... you want two points that you want a secret key, a static secret key that can be revoked, and then a one time code, and then you combine both of them, at least that's normally how most yeah. um, API systems work, I guess you're starting to get into the 2FA territory at that point. It, it's, all, it's, all a bit, it's all a little bit punching above my weight at this point. It, either way, I wanted to talk to Sam about it from a product point of view to see how he felt about it um, in terms of whether or not we're violating separations of concerns. Uh, he's out this week, so that's not going to happen, at least not immediately. Uh, I asked Dan about it, and he's going to speak to Liam, who's the engineering manager for Access, because he will have a view on it from an authentication point of view. So we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Um, but while I'm sort of waiting for that decision, or at least a steer on that decision, things are going to slow down a little bit. Um, but I will do what I can at this point. Well, that's fine. I mean, if we've got a um, 
hard they like we know exactly the output that we're going to get from this api then we can just mock it from a front Great. point of view okay and then That's just fine. fill in fill it in once we actually get the api merged um perfect and we we can also merge that mr and then do it later because it won't break it's behind the feature flag yeah so um, there's a feature flag so just stick everything behind that one re one question i i realized i forgot to ask is how does the front end know when to stop polling uh, when, I, I think the, when the everything only, returns true yeah i think that's all you can do at this point if everything returns true um then you can stop polling um okay yeah I, that I, makes. I, at this point that's the best way i mean ideally this would all be graphql but because we thought this was going to be part of approvals we use rest because we wanted to keep it consistent and we're, we're quite far down that road now so i think chucking all that in a bit and rewriting it as graphql is is a waste of time yeah also from a front end point of view the entire system is like the prior approvals form that we're going to be basically reusing is in rest as well so there'd be a lot right. of work involved in stripping that out and swapping over let's, let's keep it simple yeah okay that's fine great uh i'll my screen